in a world cloaked in ice where the wind whispered secrets of deep time. Beneath a pale sky where stars drifted like forgotten memories, life flourished unlike anything we know today. The Earth was far from silent, it was the stage of evolution's greatest test. A theater where intelligence, strength, and adaptation were the true currencies. And at the heart of this frozen realm emerged the master of the canines. Smilodon Fatalis, not just a predator but a masterpiece of evolutionary design. Its saber-like teeth were not for show, but a marvel of biological engineering. Precise, reinforced, and built to deliver without shattering. Its muscles spoke not just of power, but of control. Four limbs so strong they could anger giant prey like time itself holds the past. In this story, we won't follow tales of violent clashes, but a contest of strategies. How did the giants of the Ice Age share resources and draw invisible lines of dominance, each in their own way? Those sabers were not oddities, they were part of an integrated biological system. Smilodon did not rely on its jaws to tear flesh, but on the immense power of its neck and chest. It would pin its prey, then deliver one precise bite efficient, not excessive. This predator was never slow or lazy, but a master of ambush calculating, patient, explosive when it mattered. Among its preferred prey were young mammoths and ancient bison creatures of immense size. Each hunt demanded strength few possessed, yet Smilodon was never an absolute ruler. On the same plains, other forces moved some in numbers, others in sheer mass. It had to prove its place not with noise but with timing, precision, and restraint. Unlike modern lions that use a suffocating bite, Smilodon's jaw opened wide up to 120 degrees to position its canines like surgical blades. This was not blind force, it was refined artistry. Meanwhile, Canis Dyrus the dire Volf relied not on muscle alone, but on collective intelligence. Heavier than today's Grey Wolf by 25%, with a stronger bite. It moved in highly coordinated packs. It did not just chase prey to exhaustion, but surrounded it, confused it, and guided it into mistakes. Imagine a pack spreading across frost-covered plains, silent except for their breath in the cold air. One draws attention, while others close in from behind. No roar, no chaos, just silent cooperation. Smilodon, despite its power, often avoided such encounters. Because in the Ice Age, survival was not always about winning a fight, but knowing when to walk away. The Direwolf was not a direct enemy, but a clever competitor writing the rules through numbers and social strategy. Its shorter legs and broader chest were built for power, not long chases. Its robust jaws could crush bones vital in a world where every calorie counted. Fossils from La Brea show healed injuries proof of group care. They protected their wounded not out of instinct, but social intelligence, while Smilodon depended on a single moment. The Dire Wolf relied on sustained teamwork, two different paths both successful. Because success was not about who killed the most, but who fed wisely, protected their group, and lived to see another dawn. But the most formidable presence was not feline or canine. It was Arctidus Simus the short-faced bear. Standing over 3.5 meters tall on its hind legs, and weighing close to 900 kilograms, it did not need to hunt, it was the ultimate opportunist. It would approach a kill made by Smilodon. And by its mere presence, the smaller predator would retreat. Why? Because Arctidus was not built for speed, but for presence, endurance, and dominance. Its wide jaw and massive muscles delivered unmatched force. Yet its footsteps carried silence, not threat. Smilodon, for all its skill, respected this giant, while Smilodon mastered the ambush. Arctidus mastered the art of claiming without conflict. It knew presence alone was enough. Its diet was flexible berries, roots, and occasional meat. Stomach contents show an omnivore's wisdom, not a brute's hunger. 
Its long limbs let it roam vast distances efficient, not frantic. Its upright posture made it look almost human walking, watching, understanding. It was not a monster, but a wanderer who knew every ridge and river. In a world of scarcity, size mattered more than speed. Smilodon lacked the mass to withstand even one strike, so the smarter choice was always withdraw. Arctidus did not growl, chase, or threaten. It simply was, and that was enough. If a confrontation occurred, who would win? The answer lies not in raw power, but in terrain, timing, and strategy. Scenario 1. Smilodon versus a dire wolf pack. On open ground, wolves could outlast through rotation and pressure. Smilodon could not run long, but it never needed to. In dense forest or narrow canyons, Smilodon became untouchable. Tight spaces neutralized numbers. Scenario 2, Smilodon versus Arctidus. This was not about strength, but about wisdom. Smilodon lacked the mass to absorb a blow, so evolution favored retreat over risk. Arctidus did not need to fight just arrive. Deep snow slowed everyone but hurt the heaviest most. Thick forests blinded Volf coordination. Rocky slopes, Smilodon's kingdom. Each predator was exquisitely tuned to its environment. The Ice Age was not a battlefield, but a complex web of strategic choices. Survival was not about domination, but about knowing when to act, and when to walk away in silence. Even the mightiest giants understood, sometimes silence is victory. In the end, the Ice Age was not ruled by one predator, but by a delicate balance of specialized roles. Smilodon, the Direwolf, and Arctidus did not destroy each other. They shared the stage through niche partitioning. Smilodon, the ambush artist, dire wolves, the collective hunters. Arctidus, the strategic opportunist, this is known as ecological niche partitioning. The secret behind nature's richest eras of diversity. Today, when we see lions, wolves, and bears across the wild, we glimpse echoes of those ancient giants. Same strategies, same drive to adapt, same quiet dialogue with time. The Ice Age story is not about brute force, but about ecological intelligence and the lessons nature still teaches us. Survival does not always belong to the strongest, but to those who understand the rules of the game. They ruled not by tooth or claw, but by knowing when to walk away, 